Hi there, mamas. This is Eve of Christian Homeschool Mom, and I'm here to give you words of encouragement. And it's about a lady that had really a very, very bad past. She had a checkered past. Her name is Rahab. And her story can be found in Joshua chapter 2, verse 1. Now Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out two men from Acacia Grove to spy secretly, saying, Go, view the land, especially Jericho. So they went and came to the house of a harlot named Rahab and lodged there. So here we know the story of the Jericho, how it fell, the wall of Jericho, how it fell down. So Joshua sent two spies and then the king found out that Rahab was hiding these spies. Okay, so then she hid them, put them on the roof, covered them with flax. So when the soldiers came, she said, yeah, they were here, but they're gone. But if you'll be fast enough, you can go and maybe you can catch them. So they left her. Okay, so Rahab is that woman that hid these spies. And that's very famous story, even as a child, how she hid them. But I want to share about Rahab, about her life that really encourages me. And I hope this will encourage you as well, mothers and other people that are listening to this, either your men or children. This would still give you, or teenagers, it would still give you some encouragement. I hope so. Anyway, so we can see in here. And Rahab, just a bit of a background, she's Canaanite. And Canaanites, basically, they worship not the one true God of Abraham. They worship idols. Okay? So they're into witchcraft. They would even bury their children alive. And they would burn their children as a worship to Moloch. So that's the background of the city where she lives. So she's Canaanite, and that's the fate that she must have grew up with. So from here, she heard the story about how the Lord helped the Israelites, the Hebrews. Okay, Because when, when they left, when these uh, soldiers left, and she talked to the spies, it says here, in verse 8, all right? Now, before they lay down, she came up to them on the roof. Verse 9 of chapter 2 is still, and said to the man, I know that the Lord has given you the land, that is the Jericho, and that's the Canaan, okay? And that the terror of you has fallen on us, and that all the inhabitants of the land are faint hearted so they were scared because of you we have heard how the lord dried up the water of the red sea you know that story for you when you came to egypt and what you did to the two kings of the amorites who were on the other side of the jordan sihon and og and you utterly destroyed them so she heard all these stories i don't think she's the only one who heard these stories okay even the king knew about these stories so many people have heard these stories but among these people that have heard the stories only Rahab, only Rahab started to believe in God. Because we can see in here, in 11, as soon as we heard these things, our hearts melted. Neither did there remain any more courage in anyone because of you. For the Lord your God, she made a confession here. He is God in heaven above and on earth beneath. So before she even met the Hebrew people, okay, these two spies, before she even met the children of Abraham, she already had faith in the God of Abraham. Because she made a confession here, for the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. Okay, So she has that faith. So I know the spies went there to see and to view the land, but I believe the spies went there. God sent them there because God saw a woman that has courage, that has faith. When the king sent these soldiers in her house, I'm sure a bit she would have 
felt afraid and fear, but then she overcame that fear because she trusted in the living God. And I'm sure these spies were surprised that they found someone, a woman in that land with faith. They found Rahab with faith. And not only that, they also found Rahab with courage. She was courageous enough to make a stand. And because James said in chapter 2, 25, likewise was not Rahab the harlot also was justified by works when she received the messengers and see it and sent them out another way. Because he was talking about their faith without work is dead. So her faith was seen because of her action. Because James was saying their faith without work is dead. So God sees her faith and God sent this spice to reach out to Rahab. And we know what happened with the story. Okay, so Rahab asked this spice, please show kindness to me okay, and to my family. And they did. So they gave instruction to Rahab, if you would tie the scarlet cord, okay, and then make sure your family, you're all inside when we're having the battle. And thirdly, don't tell anyone about this business. Okay? And she did exactly what the instruction was given to them. And then afterwards, when you go to chapter 6, okay, this is how she was described by Joshua. In verse 17, Joshua basically gave her the instruction in verse 1 and 2. Okay, all of that. You can read that in your own time. Okay, so they march and they march for six days. On the seventh day, they march and they shouted and the wall fell down. In verse 17, Joshua said, only Rahab the harlot shall live. So she was described as harlot. 22, go into the harlot's house. Okay. And then 25, and Joshua spared Rahab, the harlot, her father's household, and all she had. So she was described harlot a couple of times in the book of Joshua alone. Okay, But then when you go to chapter 11 of Hebrews, which is, we all know chapter 11, it's the book of Hall of Faith, people that have lived by faith. Okay? We will see in here one by one how these people how basically obeyed God, how they showed their faith. And God, of course, was happy with them. Okay. He was delighted that they did walk by faith. It is in verse 1, you will see there what faith is. And then jumping to verse 4, he said, By faith, Abel. So this is the writer of Hebrews saying, By faith, Abel. 5. By faith, Enoch. 7. By faith, Noah. 8. By faith, Abraham. 11, by faith, Sarah. 17, by faith, Abraham. 20, by faith, Isaac. 21, by faith, Jacob. 22, by faith, Joseph. 23, by faith, Moses. And then when you go to verse 31, by faith, the harlot Rahab. Okay, the harlot wasn't even removed. It's, still, it was, it's being described who she was. She was an harlot. Okay. But I believe the reason why God put it there, because all of us have passed. All of us have checkered past. We have done like bad things in our lives that we hope we didn't do. But because we don't know God or we don't want to listen to him or to obey him. So whatever our past is, you know, whether you're a prostitute, whether you were a drug addict, whether you are an alcoholic, Whatever your past is, God can change that. Rahab, after that, she then went with the Israelites. So the land, basically, after the, se after the seventh day, they blew the trumpet. The wall fell down flat. We know that story. And then God asked Joshua to burn that place. There's no one living there that would be remaining. You know, everyone needs to be killed, man and woman. And all the animals as well. Okay, so we can see in there, God gave them already enough, more than enough, okay, warnings about what they're doing, but they decided not to listen to God. They were mockers and scoffers. But Rahab, when she heard about the God of Abraham, she did believe. And because of that, God saved her. God can save the whole people there if they did turn to God, but they didn't. 
Okay, so same thing right now. God can save us from whatever our past is. No one can tell you what your past is. When you go to Jesus, he said you're going to be a new creation. He can make you new. All things, it's pass away. Everything becomes new. And that's what happened to Rahel. So if you have a very, very bad past, don't even let anyone remind you of your past. Because God burnt that Jericho. Everything that's in it was burnt. Until now, no one was able to build on that wall again, just like how Joshua said it. He cursed it. Okay? And that is telling you that the word of God is true. Okay? So we can see in here, God used Rahab. Her profession as a harlot didn't matter to God because her profession of faith matters to him more than her profession as a harlot. And I want to end this in chapter 1, verse 5 of Matthew. So very interesting because we know Matthew chapter 1, how he wrote the genealogy. Okay, And in verse 5, it says here, Salmon begot Boaz by Rahab. Okay. So when Rahab then went in, he went in with, uh, with Joshua, with the people of the, the Hebrew people, the Israelites. She then married the contemporary of Joshua. And here in Matthew 1, 5, it says his name is Salmon. And then they had a son called Boaz. And we know the story. Boaz then she must have told her story, you know, as a mother to your son. She must have told Boaz how God was compassionate with her or her family. Mm -hmm. So when Boaz grew up, he showed compassion when a lady from Moab came to Israel, and that was Ruth. And to make a long story short, they got married, and then they had a son called Obed. And Obed had a son called Jesse, and Jesse had a son called David, the king of Israel. And from David, Jesus is descendant from David. So we can see in here, Ruth was the great, great, great grandmother, grandmother of David. And yes, God led her to be in his story as part of the lineage of the Messiah. So whatever your past is, when you go and ask the Lord Jesus to help you, he can change everything. So moms, I just want to encourage you today. God is a God that is compassionate and he can change everything. He can forgive our sins. Let's just come on him. He said, come to me. That's his invitation. All you who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. So I hope you'll come to him because I sure will because he's the strong foundation that we can all stand upon. God bless you today. Be encouraged, mamas. Bye-bye.